Hi everybody, my name is Anne. How are you today? Welcome to Art on the Creek. We're in my home studio in Parker, Colorado, and it is the weekend, which means it's time for a review. Yesterday, I painted that mountain scene of the flat irons with these guys, the Roman Schmal Aquarius paints. This is the mixing set of full pans, 14 pans. And today, as promised, we're gonna review them, get into a little more detail about them and why I like them so much. So if you're interested in learning a little bit about these paints, stick around. Are you ready? Let's go check them out. In yesterday's video, I already opened them up and swatched them out a little bit. This came with it. It's so nice. It's a, a sheet of watercolor paper with a very nicely printed swatch card. And the only issue that I have with this particular swatch card is it doesn't list any more information about these pigments. So I did have to go do some additional research and I will put all of that in the description below. I will link to the websites where I found the information because, um, so many other artists have done extensive research on these. And what I'm finding is that they use the blue wool scale for a light fastness test. The blue wool scale has been around for hundreds of years and it's very reliable. But I have found through uh, some of the research I did that some of those ratings may not be entirely accurate, uh, which is, you know, you'll just have to keep that in mind. Uh, maybe do your own light fast tests. Uh, Kimberly Crick does her own light fast tests and um, I'm always referring to her as well as a few others. So I will, I will link to those. Like I said, I also really like Dr. Um, Oto Kano. So, and then Handprint is another really good site to learn about pigments. So I will link all of that stuff down below. Uh, because right now I'm sure you guys just want to see how these paints perform. I will tell you they are beautiful. We'll just get to the down and dirty and they are a lot of fun to use. I love how transparent they are. They really are quite nice. Uh, my estimate when I first opened these was that only a couple of them were not transparent. So I will make sure and clarify that as well in the description below if you're concerned about transparency or staining or anything like that. I do have um, some new studio friends. I have Boo and Mike and Sully from Monsters, Inc. This was my daughter's favorite movie. She, it was just the right time for her um, when it came out and we love it too. So I did do a fun little, we'll set these guys up so that they can pay attention today. Ooh, Mike doesn't like to, to sit up. We'll let Boo take a nap. Um, I did paint Boo. It's not very good. It's just a little doodle. But what I really liked, I don't like her face, but what I really like is how easy it was to layer, to embellish with colored pencil and to do all of the shading. It was really easy to do this. And I loved mixing. I mixed the cobalt blue and the uh, quinacridone red with the cerulean blue, not the cobalt cerulean blue, and a little bit of the buff titanium. And I came up with this really nice lavender. Buff titanium, if you've never used it, is a great mixer. And I really love having it in, uh, in a palette. And this one is truly lovely. Um, I will just briefly let you know how this was packaged. It was wrapped in a shrink wrap and nestled in this nice little box. It's just very well protected. The tin was protected with this liner so it didn't get scratched and it all slides in here very nicely. So if you wanted to keep it in the box, you certainly could. The colors that it comes with as uh, printed out here on the swatch card are uh, Buff Titanium, Hansa Yellow Medium, Quinacridone Gold Hue. It, it says Quinacridone Gold, but it really is a hue. For those of you who don't know, PO48 is a pigment that in 2001, as soon as the car manufacturer stopped using it, um, it became really scarce and hard to find. It was just not one of those things that people, that uh, manufacturers used because the car manufacturers were a huge source for it. So by 2005, Daniel Smith had purchased all that there was left. So that was so long ago that now when you're seeing a quinacridone gold, if you're buying new paints, chances are you're going to be getting a PY150 and a PO48. The quinacridones, uh, there's two of them in here, are truly amazing pigments. 
they're really great workhorses for you and they tend to stay in that sunset range i like to call it they kind of go from a purple to this gold and all of these pinks and magentas in between and they really are lovely so i was very excited that both of these were in there pyrrole scarlet is such a beautiful color i this swatch here is a little more red than mine. Mine came out a nice pinky orange, which I love. I'm very drawn to coral shades. And we're going to use some of these today in the painting that we're going to do. The Pyro Rubine is a beautiful color to substitute if you don't have um, alizarin crimson. It's very, very nice. Quinacridone red will serve you for just about everything. Everyone needs an ultramarine blue intense. Ultramarine blue has a lot of names to it. Um, sometimes you'll see light, dark, uh, ultramarine blue, French ultramarine blue. In my eyes, they all kind of look the same. Some of the pigment strengths can be different, but um, that is uh, another deep dive into ultramarine blue for a different video. Cypress is, I'm going to be completely honest with you, it's my least favorite. <laughs> friend just because it's cypress raw umber this raw umber is just not i'm just not a fan but it's just because i rarely use it so i am going to make a resolution to myself to really try and use this paint and we'll try and use it today in our painting so if i forget forgive me because this is like a struggle i'm really trying to get into this cypress raw umber uh, but because it's a pbr7 that's a pigment that I know and love, and it is really quite nice. Indian Red PR 101, I know I will get a lot of use out of that. The Blue Ridge Burnt Sienna, this is another one that you'll see uh, from all over the world. Um, there's an Italian Burnt Sienna. This one, uh, have I seen French? I, I can't remember offhand, but often I see these referencing typical, um, or, or not typical, referencing specific areas. This Gertite is really cool. It is a PBR, but uh, it's not numbered which leads me to believe that it is just uh, this gertite, that that is the pigment, it is that stone. And it looks a lot like yellow ochre, but it's nicely transparent. I And I really love that it's in here because sometimes the yellow ochre that I really like to use the most is uh, M. Graham. And a lot of times that one can end up kind of cloudy, kind of like a, a cobalt is cloudy, not, um, you know, not in a bad way, but just not in a way that I uh, that I want things to look. So this one is really nice. I tend to gravitate more toward the transparent shades than uh, than the the semi-transparent. Staining doesn't bother me. I will take it or leave it. That's fine. Um, you just do need to be aware of that, though, in case you're going to be lifting your color off, because staining colors will adhere to the cotton fibers in your paper a lot more readily. The Thalo Green Blue shade is a PG7. This is always a shocking emeraldy green and don't walk away from it because it's an amazing mixer. I mix some beautiful uh, pine colors mixing this with the red. You can also mix it with the burnt sienna and get some really neat uh, beautiful granulation happening. Same with same here with the Thalo Blue Green shade. This is a 15-3. This is uh, in a lot of sets. Um, in fact most sets, basic sets, you will get a uh, phthalo blue and a viridian or a phthalo green. So these are really common colors. Cobalt cerulean blue, uh, PB36. I've, PB36 is a cobalt blue, but I've never heard it called the cerulean blue. So that is something, again, for another deep dive into the research of Roman Schmal. And let's just get into it. Um, I'm going to set this up here. All right, I have to move my friends. Move my friends. Crazy. Let me just get these a little closer so you can see them too, although you're seeing them from the top. Um, I'm using 100% cotton paper here and I'm just going to go through here are the paints I've already used them the, so they're not clean so don't let that alarm you I'm going to go through and wipe them off let me tell you what they're made of they are made with the finest gum arabic as is evidenced on the research that I did and they're also made with uh, glycerin and linden honey. I did mention that they felt a little bit tacky, sticky, not at all in a negative way. If you live in a humid climate, you want to be very, very careful to let these dry completely before you close the tin up and make sure that your tin is always flat. Don't store it like this with honey paints because um, if the temperature changes, you can have a runny huge mess when you open it up. So just make sure that no matter where you live, that your paints are completely dry before you close them up. For me, here in my arid climate of Colorado, honey paints are a godsend and um, I am always looking for some. I do have a wish list for some of the colors that aren't included in here, the Misty Morning and an Ocean Blue. They're a little bit of multi-pigment multi -pigment granulators 
and I will put a link to Jackson's art where I found these right now. They literally yesterday, they had links to all of their products, but today there are only two, well, three Roman Schmalls. Okay, there we go. That is a little bit better. Um, I will show you how the palette came. It's just, it's your standard tin, and I just love the tins because they make me feel more secure. I just, I prefer the feel of metal over plastic. I don't know, tactile. I'm very tactile and um, tin is indeed my preferred way to store paints. So you have four wells here in addition to two, four, six, eight here. So that is 12. And then for those of you who didn't know, this inner part will come out. It's easy. I just can't get a grip on it. There we go. So that's 12. 14, 16, 17, 18, 19 mixing wells in all. And you can mix here. It's just that you do run the risk of it running through to the back uh, in the holes where the finger hold goes. So I never take these out when I'm painting. I always just leave them in there because I've always got some, uh, enough mixing wells here and here. But if you did need that additional space, it's there. And a brush will fit in there just fine. And you could also fit brushes on these sides too. So you could take three brushes with you and use these paints and be just fine. So I think they're very portable. Um, the size is not a deterrent at all for me. And the full pans are a huge bonus because you can put your whole brush in and that will help protect your brushes a little bit. So let me show you the my some of my favorite colors in here. We'll just go ahead and do some more swatching on this paper here rather than that small swatch sheet. So far I've had a lot of fun with all of the colors actually. Let's start with this buff titanium. Buff titanium is such a nice color. Here we go. It's such a good mixer and you can really get it to do quite a bit for you. It can really be a powerhouse. So let's just try, let's try mixing some of this buff titanium with, we'll pick a random one here. Let's try this uh, PG7 here, this Thalo Green. Now the Thalo Green is a really powerful pigment and you just need very little of it. So let me just put a little bit more buff titanium in here and you can get a really lovely robin's egg shade. So there's quite a bit that you can do with the buff titanium. Let's try some more mixing. Let's mix some with just a touch of this uh, quinacridone is a rose, a quinacridone red. Now this is a PV-19. PV-19 will appear many different ways. Uh, it can range anywhere from purple to pink. We can mix a little bit more pink in there. What a beautiful color you can get. So the Buff Titanium is really just a great mixer and I'm so glad that it's in here. Let me see, let me try mixing it with a blue since we haven't done that. I'll choose the Ultramarine since most of you have that one. and you get a lovely soft blue. So there are a lot of great ways to use the buff titanium. All of these, it would mix very well with all of them. I've sped this portion up in the interest of time here, but we're just mixing that buff titanium, first of all with the Hansa Yellow Medium, now that Quinacridone Gold Hue, moving on to the Pyrrole Scarlet, and now let's try that Pyrrole Rubine. You can see these colors just give you a lovely muted pastel range. Skipping around a bit because we've already done uh, some of the colors out of order, but we'll mix that Cypress Raw Umber, the Indian Red, and now going into that Blue Ridge Burnt Sienna. Really nice mix there. And now we'll try that Gertite. The Gertite is becoming one of my favorite colors. I am really impressed with that one. And now we'll do the Thalo Blue Green Shade since we've already done the green one up on top. And here it is with the Cobalt Cerulean Blue. which makes a very lovely, lovely shade as well. So you see you have this great range of muted pastels available to you. They, kind of, they definitely lend toward the warm side. Uh, let me show you what the swatches look like when they're not mixed with the buff titanium. We'll swatch these on a little bit of a speed as well. We've got buff titanium, Hansa yellow medium, quinacridone gold. Look at that, isn't that cool? <laughs> Pyrrole scarlet and the pyrrol rubine. I just, I'm in love with these colors, you guys. I can't get enough of them. Quinacridone red, 
ultramarine intense and it really is a good shade of ultramarine want to get a little extra water on there so that we can see some granulation and there's the cypress cypress raw umber deep don't hate it how, not in love with it yet, but I don't hate it. The Indian Red, and then finally that Blue Ridge Burnt Sienna, which is also going to granulate for us. For us. This Gertite is becoming one of my favorite colors by far. It's amazing. Uh, the Thalo Green Blue Shade, Thalo Blue Green Shade. The Cobalt Cerulean Blue, and this one should also be a good granulator for us as a PG36. And again, this is not the best paper to show granulation. If you really want to have some good granulation, I got way too much water on there, um, you're going to want to use rough watercolor paper. And it does need a bit of water to do its granulation voodoo. Uh, but uh, we'll try and get a little bit going here with this. All right, so you can see with these swatches, they really are just quite lovely. I can see some of the granulation starting here in the ultramarine. Here's the burnt sienna. I believe that the cypress and the um, the gertite will also do that and obviously the cobalt is granulating as well. So as you can see they're very clean, very sheer, very bright pigments and when I see a palette like this that is this vibrant and this clear it really makes me want to paint. Now the, here they are just toned down with the buff titanium so you can see the difference here you really can get quite a lot out of buff titanium if you mix it. And these are all about a 50-50 mix. So buff titanium, really good to have. If you don't have one, or if you're looking to try just one pan of Roman Schmal, I would try the buff titanium because it would really um, extend and augment what you already have. If you're looking for some other unique pigments, they have quite a bit. And uh, Jackson's is the vendor that sells them, so I will definitely link to their site. This Gertite is amazing. I don't know if you guys can see how well that's granulating, but it is really lovely. See, and I love that. I love, I love granulators, and I love earth pigments, so this is going to be a fun set to use. So here's what I want to do today. I took some pictures when I was in Boulder. One of the pictures that I took was uh, we hung out in front of the courthouse for a while, uh, there's a nice lawn there with some benches and a lot of people like to eat lunch. So here is what I want to paint today. I'll put it up on the screen. It is a rose that was at the courthouse and I just really love how it uh, how it oh, looks. Right. And I there's a little bit of dead spots on it but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, keep it now. I have to have my friends have to leave. They're gonna have to go sit somewhere else. So I'll put them up here by Owly. Owly holds all my paintbrushes and they can watch from afar because you guys, as much as I love my toys, you guys mean more to me than they do. <laughs> I kind of started out riding the struggle bus on this one, you guys. I don't know. My tapes were all running out. I finally found some washi tape that had some tape on it and it didn't stick very well. So they're old. It's probably time to get new. Um, just doing a real quick sketch with pencil here, kind of lightly. And um, if you can see it, that's great. If not, um, when I draw flowers, I just kind of draw each little petal individually and kind of build them off one another. You might help you to draw a little circle first so that you can contain your flower within a space. I'm starting out with the Hansa Yellow Medium. And then I'm going in with uh, varying amounts of the Pyrrole Scarlet and that Quinacridone Red. I'm really going to turn the chroma up on this because I want this rose to look uh, more at the beginning of its life than at the end, which is how I took the picture. And as always, my rose is going to be a very loose interpretation of what I see because that is the way I paint. Um, that reference photo is yours to do what you like. You can paint a very detailed version of it. You can print it off, trace it, draw from that if you don't want to draw it all, and uh, pretty much have your way with this picture. I give you my blessing. You may use it however you like. Um, I'm going in with more and more of the mixes of the Pyrrole Scarlet. That Quinacridone Gold, I was able to use it with the Thalo Green and the Thalo Blue for the leaves in the background, and now I'm just having a lot of fun. As a mixing set, this is my favorite thing to do on, uh, on uh, my watercolors, is to just let the paints play on the paper and let them come up with the design for me. I really like that freedom to be able to just decide how I'm going to put these paints together to create what I want to create while really featuring what the paints can do. And a lot of that does lend toward a very loose interpretation. You can certainly uh, focus a lot more detail on things if you wanted to, again, like I was saying, but that's not my style. I love how all of these colors go together. I 
even used the cypress raw umber deep here toward the end and I really enjoyed using that raw umber as a mixer and I know I only just whetted your appetite. I only scratched the surface of the mixing capabilities of this set, but I will tell you on this rose, I didn't want to stop. I just kept having so much fun. I love how tropical it ended up looking. And for the warmth in this set, it just came out with such a lovely balance between warm and cool. And I really am in love with the Roman Schmal Aquarius paints. They are professional grade paint and like I said, I will definitely put all of that information in the description about pigments and light fastness. So let me just get this dry and then we can give it a title and a signature. After it was dry, I did go back in and add a little bit more with a liner brush, just some details on the bud. And I am just going to grab a pencil here so that I can sign it. I'm going to title it uh, Courthouse Rose. And I think that this Aquarius mixing palette, this set of 14 full pans, is a great way to discover Roman Schmal. Now, if you didn't want to invest this much, I think this was around $50, $57 when I purchased it. That's US dollars. Um, I think they have a half pan set that's really nice for around 30 or 37. So like I said, everything will be in the description below with links to Jackson's. You guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this look into the Aquarius set of Roman Schmal, the mixing set. And be aware that you can mix just about everything. Really, when you're buying 14 paints, you're really getting whatever mathematical equation that is. Is that 14 to the 14th power? I don't know. Math was never my strong suit, although I do like it. The Gertite is just so lovely. There's lots of granulation going on. I had no trouble whatsoever watching these mix on the paper or letting them mix in the palette itself. I hope that you will consider these paints. I'm not being paid to make this review or anything. This is just my genuine opinion after painting a couple paintings with them and really having a lot of fun using these colors. I can't wait to keep playing with this set and discovering all of those mixes, whatever mathematical formula or equation that is, <laughs> to have 14 pans of paint that you can mix. Oh, my friends, if you enjoy content like this, I so appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Please consider giving this video a like, sharing it with your friends, or leaving a comment. All of those things do help my channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And if you have, I thank you so much. Don't forget to hit that reminder bell and you will know whenever I create a new video. Thanks so much. See you next time. Have a great week. Bye-bye.